This is the handover for your Hobby Vantana 55. We're gonna begin under the bonnet, first of all. When you open up the passenger door, at the end of the dashboard on the left-hand side, you have your bonnet release. Under the floor, you've got your engine battery, and underneath this seat box there, you've also got your vehicle toolbox as well. So with the bonnet released, pop up the lever, and then we look underneath the bonnet. Over on the extreme left-hand side, you have your screen wash access. Remove these caps and it gives you access to your brake fluid, power steering fluid and radiator reservoir. Oil cap and oil dipstick. And because the engine battery is located under the floor, if you do need to jump start the vehicle, then the positive needs to go onto that flat plate there, which is typically concealed by a cap. And the negative goes over onto this bolt here. So, fuel filler cap, ignition key in, twist, and twist off, and straight forward into there. Down under the skirt, behind the exhaust, you've got your drain valve for your grey water. So this is the water from your shower tray, your vanity unit, and from your kitchen sink. Drive over a drain or a gully, outlet port's just there, turn the handle through, approximately 90 degrees, opens up an inlet valve and allows all of that waste water to drain out. Close it back over after use. Sitting inside the flap on this side, you've got your toilet cassette. Toilet chemical you'll need, I'll show you where that goes in a minute. Pull up on the yellow lever and the body of the cassette should come out. If it doesn't, if it offers resistance, just check to make sure that the slider inside is shut. Pull out the whole cassette. On a campsite, you have collection points for these to go into. So you take the yellow cap off to the top completely, tip the whole thing up, press the air valve, and as it tips up, so you let the waste then go out of the end unit. Before you put it back in, up to a cap full of your base chemical, poured into there, mixed with about two litres of water. Give it a little swirl around so that it's charged up, ready to go, and then slide your cassette back in and away. Alongside you have your mains lead. Now, previous owners left two leads in the van. We'll show you those to you later on. One's a 10 metre lead, one's a 25 metre lead. To connect and disconnect, you have a flap, which you need to open up, push in and push on. All right, do this first of all, and then connect to the power supply that you're gonna be using. It's the safest way around. That's your exhaust vent for your gas, water heater, room heating system. So make sure that doesn't get blocked up or obscured in any way. So you notice just underneath the brake light, you have your reversing camera. Uh, there's controls for it on the dashboard. You can drive with it on if you wish to do so. When we open up the back door, we've got access to our underbed storage area. Go into these in more detail, but you've got your gas locker down onto this side. Two gas bottles in there, two six kilogram uh, propane cylinders so designed for cold weather use. On this particular model, you have a single feed going into one cylinder. You turn on and turn off the gas on the brass nut on top. You would undo using a spanner and it's left hand thread. So you do up to undo, you undo to do up um, to release the cylinder and change over to the other one. That's then fed into a copper core system. There is a single tap in here which is the isolator valve specifically for the water heating room heating system it's in the on position at the moment so it's allowing that gas flow to go through it's unlikely if you're turning off and on at the bottle that you would need to turn that one off as well under the bed on this side i'll briefly try and lift this mechanism up you can take all of these boards out if you wish to do so you have the access to your fresh water tank. There's one here, there's another one slightly further back. If you want to drop in solvents or solutions for cleaning, then you can do so. It's filled up externally, which we'll show you later on. Uh, to drain the tank off, you just undo this wheel spanner here, and you'll hear the water splashing down underneath. It's imperative for winter storage that you don't leave the vans full of water. And in conjunction with that, there's a drain valve for the water heater as well, which is located down in the space on the floor in there. So at the moment, the water heater's set up. 
There's a blue tap on top, it's in line at the moment, which means it's allowing the water system to go through. It's thermostatically controlled, so in the event of the air temperature in that space going below two degrees centigrade, the top tap turns through 90 degrees and the little blue uh, spot at the bottom also pops out and it automatically drains the water heater out to protect it. To reset it, you've got to turn it back through 90 degrees at the top, push the blue button back in, and you should be able to then recharge and fill up the water heater. So the water heater controls are located at the head of the bed. To set the water heater up, you do need to make sure that the drain valve, as previously mentioned, is closed. You turn your taps on for hot water in the kitchen. You draw the water through until there's a consistent flow. Press and hold onto the switch and you'll see this display light up and it's giving you instruction as to what the status is at the moment. So this is a gas uh, only unit. So at the moment it's generating uh, room heating, uh, but we've got the option for water as well. Tap on the dial and you can use the dial to physically scroll through the different characters and settings. We'll start with the room heating system. Press in on that one and you can set the temperature to your desired output temperature control up to a maximum of 30 degrees. Whilst it's trying to heat up in this room space, the top symbol, the flame symbol, begins to flash. To turn it back down again, press in on that unit, bring it back down all the way to an off position, and that turns off the room heating system altogether. Water heating, crossover, so that you've got the temperature gauge inside the water tank. You have a choice of a 40, a 60 or a boost position. Typically I put it onto the 60 to warm the water up, take around about half an hour or so. Whilst it's doing so, again, this symbol at the top here will start to flash. We preheated this one earlier, so it's up and running. We'll turn the water heater off. You can just use the fan on its own. Go into this one, select the word vent, and then you can increase or decrease and it will recirculate the air within the van just as a fan. So, turn that one off. Everything that we can do on the room heating and the water heating can be done via a timer control. So when you go into this, you can set it up so that the water heating or, and, or room heating comes on tomorrow, say at eight o'clock in the morning and goes off. And obviously off the back of that, you've got a timer as well. So you can set it up to the date and time that it happens to be at this moment in time. So we know it's about 10 past two and we can go from there. Settings and controls, purely and simply for changing languages, possibly for resetting the unit if there are problems or issues. To switch off the whole unit, just press and hold in for a couple of seconds and you'll see the word off displayed and it will begin to shut down. So the awning handle stowed up above the inside of the double doors. Put the T up into the slot. These are sunshades, so wet or windy conditions, you have to put them away. T up in the slot, start to twist and the awning will begin to roll out. We're in a little bit of a wind tunnel here, so I'm gonna take this one out too far. But you've got legs which are clipped up into the pelmet. Simply spring loaded, bring each leg down, let the plastic lever drop through your fingers onto the floor, and then lock that lever back. They are quite stiff, just at the point you think that you're gonna break them, they'll lock into position. Same on the other end. To repeat, full extension on the rollout awning is about two and a half meters. Fold the leg back in, just hold it with your fingertips. Make sure that the foot is against the inside of the helmet, not the other way around because it won't close properly. So, as we've done there, and then you should be able to wind the awning back in nice and neatly. Water filler cap is located above the offside rear wheel. By the way, we've got a wheel trim on order for you. It should be in on Monday. Open up the flap, push your bliss cap, and then a hose pipe straight in. This is just inside the limit for the sliding door. So a word of caution is if you set this to fill up with water, don't immediately just flow, throw open the sliding door because it will likely catch and break off the top cap. When you're finished, lock the cap back into position. And then 
close the flap down like so. And we'll open up the sliding door. And just inside the sliding door, you've got your step switch. So it's just a straightforward open and closing action to make the step go in and go out. Critical to the whole operation of the 12 volt system in the back of your motorhome is this little isolator tower switch here. You can remove the key altogether. If you do so, your 12 volt system is completely switched off in the back. When you're driving the vehicle, there is no longer a relationship between the engine battery and the leisure battery for recharging. So 99% of the time, you'll have the key locked into position so that you've got the relationship between the two systems. Maybe if you were storing the vehicle, you might want to disconnect it or if you're working on the leisure battery. So when you first come in above the sliding door, you've got a 12 volt control panel. These panels can be linked via a smartphone. There's a wireless local area network system. Uh, there's instructions in your handbooks if you want to run it off the app uh, that Hobby provide. On and off is controlled via this simple on off switch. The musical note symbol um, activates and turns on the hi-fi uh, and reversing camera system that you've got in the cab. By pressing that, you'll see a light illuminate around the front of the unit. You have a battery level indicator, which will show you the condition that the batteries are in, and also a water level indicator for your fresh water level, so we currently have about half a tank, and for your waste water level as well. The floppy disk symbols, one, two, and three, I will try and explain it quite simply. If you've ever had um, a car with electric seats in it, they possibly came with a memory setting. These can be set up for presets for your interior lights. So you can turn on the lights within a certain order, perhaps for nighttime use, um, for example. So you've only got a limited number of lights and then just have that as a preset rather than manually going around physically turning off different light groups choice of three different positions. At the moment, this one is set so that when you have got the interior lights on, it will default and it will take, for example, the ceiling lights down to a very low setting and then just put on one reading light in the back. The rest of your light switches come from the settings. So you have one for the outside awning light, one for ceiling lights um, and airline locker lights, and then ones above the cooker and in other generalized locations around the inside of the van, including spotlights and reading lamps within. There are other light switches that you'll find located around the van um, that turn on things like the bathroom lights as well. You can scroll around on this hi-fi type knob and it will give you things like your interior and exterior temperatures. Uh, the status on draw that there is on the battery. So at the moment it's 3.2 amps. It's been drawn on the battery because we've got all the interior lights on. Uh, the current temperature of your water and room heating system. And incidentally, you can run the controls that we showed you on the Truma system from here as well. And also then the status of your engine battery also. Vehicle bat uh, habitation battery and then back to your water level, and then back to the front hobby logos and symbols. So your mains RCD box is located underneath the forward facing seat. At the moment, you'll see that we've got the system switched off at the moment. So you connect it to the side of your van, first of all, you connect to your power supply on your site post. You then turn on the end switch, the singular switch. Just do a quick circuit breaker test, make sure everything's safe. Should trip out instantaneously. And then you can then come across on the group switches and that will turn on your three pin sockets um, and any mains supply units out that you have, things like the battery charger, for example. So under your sink, you've got your two burner hob and also your sink taps. Use something like a gas match or a gas lighter for turning on the gas supply. If you haven't used the gas for a while, you'll need to draw the gas through on the hob, first of all. It's the most efficient way of making sure that you've got that continuity of supply. There's both burners working there. The lid doesn't have an isolator on it, so if you bring the lid down over the flame, it will continue to burn, it'll heat up the glass and the glass will explode. So make sure that everything is switched off and cooled down sufficiently before you bring the lid down. Hot and cold water controls, just a straightforward monoblock tap. Um, earlier on, we did heat the water up. So after the initial surge, uh, you should start to see some steam rising on those hot taps. And that's giving you hot water for the shower and for the vanity unit as well. Around about 10 litres, 
Um, it takes around about 30 to 40 minutes for the water to heat up on the gas. And you can see the steam now just starting to rise in the shot. All of that waste water is going into your tank underneath, which you drain off externally. So your 12 volt compressor fridge, open the door first up. You'll see a little green light come on to tell you that the 12 volt supply is available for you to use. Turn your thermostat, the light will come on. The higher the number, the colder the fridge will become. And now we hear a slight buzz. If you close the door over, there's two positions for the door to be closed into. In this position at the moment, it'll allow the door to fully close. If you open the door again and push it into the vent position, for storage, you put it into that position and it just allows airflow to go into the fridge, stop it becoming too mildewy. In one of the cupboards towards the back of the van, you'll come across this shrink wrapped box. Um, it is your reflation kit. It's the replacement for the spare wheel. Um, it's quite common on hobby models. Um, undo the zip. There's a 12 volt adapter which plugs into a cigar lighter. You can use it as an air compressor for inflating the tires or you can change it over and use it with a gel and it squirts a resin in to seal up any potential slow punctures. So when we move inside to your toilet and toilet cassette, you've got a swivel bowl action on the main bowl itself. To the right hand side of the bowl, you've got a 12 volt lever. Before you use the toilet, bring that lever forward and it allows a main wastegate to open into the bottom of the bowl, let your waste go straight through. To flush the loo, you press the blue button at the back. It takes a direct feed from your fresh water supply and flushes it around the inside of the bowl. When the cassette is approaching full, you'll see an indicator light coming on, like so, telling you it needs to be emptied. After use, push the slider back and it closes it off. Recommend that you use a toilet paper that is designed for chemical tanks. If you use domestic toilet paper, it can lead to clogging, which will make it more difficult for you to empty. Your vanity unit, straightforward. Again, a hot and a cold tap onto this. But this also comes with a pull-out attachment. So you can then make it into the shower head as well. So in the airline locker above the forward facing seat, you've got your Ropo control box. Uh, this unit, if it's connected up to a TV with a decoder built into it, is very straightforward to use. Turn on the system and you'll see a series of lights come on. For the most part, for UK use, you're going to be using it on the Astra 2 setting. You can change it to other satellites uh, as you move around Europe if that's what's required. You'll hear buzzing from the roof. You'll see a power and a green LMB light come on. When it successfully locates, um, the amber lock light should come on and you should then be able to tune your TV straight in to the available uh, satellite preview channels. Inside the locker on the left-hand side, you've got the option of a 12 volt socket. If you're buying an Avtec TV, it would plug into there. Um, if you are on main took up, you can use uh, a main three pin Aerial feed comes in from the satellite unit, goes through the, the uh, black box and then down through the conduit so it can then be plugged into the back of the television and onto your TV accordingly. The making up of the front bed, for this version I would remove the table completely so you undo the white clips at the back, take away the table, supplied with the van is a infill board which locks onto the lower bracket. It has a fold down leg or panel onto it, which would then sit onto the floor with the infill cushion provided to give you your infill. So moving into the dashboard area, we'll begin with the head unit that's in the middle there. So this is your CD radio um, satellite navigation system. Um, you have a musical note button, which is on the control panel. When that's pressed, you'll see a white light come on um, around the main knob, um, indicating that there's power to the unit. Incidentally, this will not work if the red tap has been, red uh, switch has been turned off on the side of the driver's seat. Pressing on it should turn to blue and you'll start to get your uh, initial advisories that it's turning on. It's a Waco uh, Dometic Group uh, blank point system and after a few seconds it will go into the main menu so you can then uh, access things like your satellite navigation system. You've got CD player at the top, radio, 
select onto those buttons and tune your radios in. If you've turned the 12 volt system off completely, you'll need to retune the 12 volt unit and it should lock on then and find the strongest signal available according like so. Just to let you know that we are actually up in Scotland. Go back to the menu button. You've got USB ports on the front as well as navigation, Bluetooth access for your phone. The reversing camera image is showing up on that one as well. And we can go from there. Press and hold in for a couple of seconds, turns it back to a white light and that switches the unit off. So your air conditioning controls are located into the center of the, the panel. Um, you've got your temperature control controlled by swizzling the knob onto there. You can direct the airflow around the cabin space and increase and decrease the speed to there. If you're going to demix the windscreens, you can press onto that one and it focuses all the airflow up onto the front. Recommend for efficient use of the air conditioning that you have it into the recirculation mode and that you put your air conditioning symbol onto there and it will give you the most efficient flow of air around the inside of the van. Symbol down here is for your heated uh, mirrors. So engaged, um, it will demist the mirrors for you on those damp mornings. You can centrally lock all of the vehicle from this point and unlock accordingly. Has a light switch, self-explanatory. ASR, there's a traction control system into the front of the vehicle, front wheel drive. Um, for the most part, it stays on. So if you were driving on a loose surface like we are at the moment and drove aggressively, um, the wheels would try and slip, the engine would cut in and give you engine braking, which would stop that wheel slippage. If you were wanting to drive onto say wet grass or ice, then I'd probably recommend that you have it switched off. And then that way you have direct throttle to wheel control and you can control um, how those wheels grip. Reverse on this model, up onto the centre column, push over and push back, and it should engage the reverse for you. Your cruise control and speed limiters are on the lower stalk, your indicators and also your dipped and side light and main beams are controlled on the top stalk, and then wiper controls over here. Down Behind the back of the steering wheel, you've got your rear fog light and also your headlamp beam adjustment. So if you're laden with goodies in the back, you can bring the beam down to stop dazzling other drivers. And then right over on the door panel, you've got your electric mirror controls and your electric window controls and also an additional lock point uh, for the central locking system as well. Into the windscreen, you have got blinds. Um, in the above locker, you've got uh, silver screens which you can use on the outside but for summertime use this will give you adequate uh, security and darkness at night. There's also similar ones on the driver and passenger doors as well. So that concludes the handover for your hobby Vantana. I sincerely hope that you're going to enjoy it and get lots of miles and lots of smiles out of it. On behalf of Island Camp fans, thank you for watching this presentation. Take care.